it's those grand Goldbergs, presented by the makers of High Test Oxidol. Going, going, almost gone. Yes, folks, I mean Oxidol's Jingle Jubilee. Only two more days and this great contest is over. Only two more days left to jingle your way into $1,100. So start jingling today. Eight $100 bills given every day this week, Monday through Friday, just for best last lines to a jingle about Oxidol in washing machines. And besides all that, a $1,000 grand prize at the end of the week. A thousand dollars extra for the week's best daily winner. But today's Thursday, remember. So just today and tomorrow, that's all the time left to get in line for one of those hundred dollar daily prizes and that thousand dollar grand prize. So get your pencil right now because here's the jingle. High test oxidols, a delight, said a clever young housewife named Wright. In my washing machine, it gets clothes so clean. Now, you just add a last line that rhymes with right. A line that rhymes something like, uh, they're really a marvelous sight, and send with your name and address and an Oxidol box top or facsimile to the Goldbergs, Cincinnati, Ohio. Now, that's all it takes to line yourself up to win $1,100 before this great contest closes. Now, your entry goes in today's contest if it's received today. In tomorrow's, if it's postmarked before midnight tomorrow and received in Cincinnati not later than October 3rd. Now, originality, suitability, and aptness are what count. Residents of Canada, United States, Hawaii, and Canada are eligible. Winners are announced one week after each daily contest. Complete printed lists of winners are available upon written request to the Goldbergs, Cincinnati, Ohio, after the final contest. The same jingle is used throughout the contest. Now, your dealer has it and the rules. And you may send any number of entries, just so each is accompanied by an Oxidol box top or facsimile. So don't let anything stop you from sending one or more entries with your name and address to the Goldbergs, Cincinnati, Ohio, today. Now, to be sure and get in line for $1,100 before this great contest closes tomorrow. And wait after today's show for last Thursday's winner. And now, the Goldbergs. Well, the Goldbergs are riding home to New York, and very fast, too. The man they hired, a certain George Stark, is a daring driver. And yesterday, he beat a train to a certain small station. But why? Why, the Goldbergs wanted to know. And then he told them, surprisingly enough, that he was picking up his baby, which he intended taking to his mother. And then... We heard what he said to the woman who brought the child, and it sounded very, very queer. What is Stark up to? Listen. Uh, 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 Rosalie, darling, put up the windows on the side so the baby shouldn't get a draft. All right, Uh, Mark. Sleeping very tightly. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Baby sleeping and Uncle David sleeping in, in the trailer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It's all right. You can talk already. She's fast right. asleep. It's all right. You sure. can talk. Button up your neck, Rosalie. Please. It's all right. Your baby's sleeping, George. That's good. Uh-huh. You don't have a radio in this car, do you? No, why? Is there anything you want to hear? No, no, no. Nothing special. Uh, Can I trouble you for a cigarette? I'll stop and get some later. I'm sorry. I only have a cigar. Well, uh, I'll have to stop then. He seems awfully nervous to me, Mama. Who, Samuel? The chauffeur. To me, too, Ma. Be a man alone with a child. Well, uh, you didn't see a newspaper this morning, did you? No. What's he want a newspaper for? Miss Samuel, I'm a kind of demure, maybe. He must be nervous. He wants to know. Everybody wants to know. It's like a fever. Why, Samuel, why did you... uh... I don't know, Mother. What did he turn for? We're supposed to stay on Route 6. 
Uh, George, why did you turn off? I, I, I want to get some cigarettes. I want to get a newspaper. Well, we'll be putting on about 15 miles that way if we go through the town. That's all right. I'll, I'll make it up. Is the, is the baby sleeping, Molly? Yeah, she's fast asleep. Say, George, there's a speed limit on these roads. The state troopers... Oh, I just said... Oh, I thought you said you saw one. Why, are you afraid of them? No, no. No, why should I be afraid of them? I, I just don't want it to cost you anything if we get caught speeding. Afraid I? I got nothing to be afraid of. Oh, I nearly got up. Oh, if, if when we stop her, I'd like to warm a bottle for the baby. She's still sleeping, ain't she? Yeah, but, but anyway, nevertheless, I'll, I'll warm it good so it'll stay warm and we wouldn't have to stop after. Here are some stores. Stop here. All right. I'll, uh, I'll go out and get your paper. No, no, no. That's all right. I'll be right back. Will you get me two cigars, please? Okay. Gee, what is he so nervous? Who isn't nervous these days? Who isn't nervous? How is the baby? Sweet, sweet. I'm glad she's sleeping at least. I'm glad she's sleeping. Jake. Yeah? Just, just look. What? I, I, I just want you to look and, and don't get mad and don't howl. I, I just want you to look. Look, th this is all hand-stitched, no? Oh. What? Here. Look, look at the baby's jacket. And if yes? I, I, I mean, if, if yes, look, e even the dress. Oh, 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 handmade, Jake. Jake, there's clothes and, and there's clothes. So what? Something awfully funny here. Please. What's so funny? How do you know where these clothes came from? He must have been a chauffeur for rich people before he took this job. And maybe they gave the clothes to him. But anyway... Uh, please, without bots. You're not writing a scenario now. Molly, please. All right. All right, Jake. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, so. So why didn't he introduce us to the lady who brought the baby on the train? Why, why didn't he say if she's the mother or if she's wife? Molly, please, don't put ideas in my head. Here he comes. He's coming. And please, please, don't start building up hallucinations. Please. Things are going smoothly. Let him go. Uh, all right, sir. Uh, did you get your paper? Yeah. My cigar, please? Yeah. Uh, I, well, I forgot to take out the milk. Well, we can do that later. I've got to get to a telegraph office. I, I, I want to send a telegram. I, I'll make up all this time I'm losing for you. Telegram now. Shut, shut. Did, uh, did you see what you were looking for in the newspaper? Uh, who, uh... And I was looking for anything. Well, I only saw Sammy. Sammy. This is the telegraph office. Oh, oh, where? Over there, on the other side of the street. Oh, I see it. You'll, you'll take the bottle off, please, of the milk. We can wait till we get out of this town, can't we? Well, uh, no, no, if, if you're going out, I mean, anyway. If you're going, I would like very much that you should... Uh, Anyway, so every time the car stops, so she opens her eyes. I won't be a minute. Ma, Pa, I don't like it. Like what? Well, gee, if you can't feel it, Pa, I can't tell you. Sammy, please, don't let your imagination skip away with you. Please. Maybe he has some private trouble. Evidently he has. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been taking the child to his mother. It's just another marriage on the rocks. Well, if that's all it is, what did he want the newspaper for? And then, then what did he want to know if we had a radio? And why doesn't he want to get the bottle for the baby? And, and who was the woman who got off the train? So what do you want me to do, what? Well, I know what I'd do, Pa. I'd pay him for his two days' work and give him the baby and go ahead without him. Maybe, Jacob. Uh, nonsense, nonsense. This is all speculation of your own imagination, Molly. And I don't want to hear another syllable pertaining to the same. 
Not one iota, you hear? Mm-hmm. All right, have it your own way, Paul. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> okay. Now, there won't be no more stops for me until I get the kid to my mother. That'll be sometime tonight. Oh, uh, but uh, just one minute, please, before you start the car. Just one minute, please. Yeah, no, it's over. What is it, Mom? Well, uh... Take the baby a minute, Rosalie, please. What is it, Mouse? Just one minute here, Rosalie, please. All right. I'll, I'll be right back. Where are you going? Where are you going? I'll, I'll, I'll be right back. I have to send a telegram also. To who? To, to somebody. Well, I'll, I'll go with you, boss. All right. Uh, is anybody? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. Uh, pardon me, please. You, uh, my son was just in here, and and he sent a telegram. What? Uh, my my son was here, and he just sent a telegram. And um, just this minute, he was here in the event, and he left, and 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 I think he gave you the wrong address. Would you mind showing me the telegram he sent, please? What's the name, please? George Stark. All right, just a minute, please. Yes, please. George Stark. With a G. S. We just send in that wire, lady. Uh, would you mind if I see if, if he gave the right address? Well, let's see. It's sent to... Uh, uh... Would you mind if I see it, please? No, I guess that's all right. You don't mind. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh. Was uh, that the right address? Yes. Yes. I'm afraid it was. The right address, but what was in the telegram? What did Molly see? And does this throw any more light on George Stark's mysterious doings? Now remember, just today and tomorrow to get in line for $1,100 in Oxidol's Jingle Jubilee. So just add a last line to Oxidol's Jingle and send with an Oxidol box top or facsimile and your name and address to the Goldbergs, Cincinnati, Ohio, today. Your dealer has the jingle and the rules. And now, last Thursday's $100 winners. Mrs. E. M. Dibble, Pueblo, Colorado. Mrs. J. Henry Lino, Dallas Center, Iowa. Mrs. Ernest H. Bishop, Quincy, Massachusetts. Mrs. R. M. Ricker, Alcott, New York. Mrs. Mabel B. Jones, Lakewood, Ohio. Mrs. William H. Frank, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mrs. Pearl Davis, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mrs. T. Broadhurst, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Congratulations, winners. Now, be sure to listen to the next episode tomorrow. The Goldbergs find out what they think is the truth. Until then, this is Art Millett speaking for the makers of High Test. Oxidol.